Can you tell the difference? Can you? Two of the hottest trends in home brewing right now are Kvike yeasts and these new thiol releasing yeasts. Today, I thought I would brew up a split batch and put it to the test. I'm using Voss Kvike and I'm going against Omega Yeasts Star Party thiol releasing yeast. Let's get brewing. Allow me to introduce the grain bill for this one. Six pounds of Odyssey Pilsner from Root Shoot Malting. Uh, thank you, Northern Brewer, for sending me some craft malts from Colorado. Five pounds of Mecca Grades La Manta, which is a pale ale malt. Last time I made my New England IPA, I think these really helped out a lot. These golden naked oats. So I got two pounds of those going in. Two pounds of white wheat. Those are all gonna go through the grain mill. And then after I run that through the grain mill, I'm also adding two pounds of flaked oats and two pounds of flaked wheat. I am making a larger than normal batch so that I can split it into two fermenters and get about three gallons of each beer because I have a feeling they're gonna taste delicious. They're gonna taste delicious. They're gonna taste delicious. I mean, I was expecting it to be a totally different drinking experience. So I went ahead and crushed these up nice and fine into a fine little flour there. <laughs> For water today, I'm starting with two of these bad boys. temperature for this I'm just gonna mash it at 152 but I am gonna be doing a couple things different during this brew to try to release some of those styles so the first thing that I looked at with this beer when it came to the styles was the malts that I was using the way I understood it is that certain Pilsner malts have a slightly higher thial level than other malts so the first reason that I split my grain bill in half and did half, like almost half pale and almost half Pilsner malt was because I wanted to get some of those thiols from the Pilsner malt into the beer. The second thing that I'm gonna do to try to get some more thiols in this beer is I'm gonna try mash hopping. When you mash hop with certain hops, it releases more thiols into the beer and it also helps the grains get more thiols out. I have chosen specifically for their higher thiol content or the ability for them to release more thiols during the mash process is Sots and Cascade. It's gonna be a hop explosion. Brewer shades. Thank you to Northern Brewer for sending me not only these cool shades, but the ingredients that I needed to make this beer. So thank you very much, Northern Brewer. Check them out for all your ingredient needs. Cheers. Northern Brewer sent me some fat phantasm powder. So this is thiol. Thiol powder is what they call it. Apparently it's made from the skins of the Sauvignon Blanc grapes in the New Zealand area and it has an incredibly high amount of thiols in there. So how do I use this Phantasm powder? Well, during the Whirlpool, when I'm cooling my beer down, I'm gonna add the Phantasm at that point. So I'm just gonna add it like I'm adding a normal flame out addition. I wanna see is I'm making the same wort, I'm gonna split it into two fermenters and I'm gonna use Kvike yeast for the other one. And we're gonna see, do I get some of those same flavors without using the Star Party yeast? Or is it gonna be a completely different beer? I don't know, who knows? Who knows? I'm back with my flame out edition. Whirlpool is on. Phantasm is going in. It's in. Boss <laughs> like. And 
a ginormous starter of Star Party. There's a little story behind this one. Uh, it was very hot last week. So I got some liquid yeast sent to me from Northern Brewer, had the ice packs, had everything. It was telling me it was gonna be here on a certain day and then it didn't, didn't come. And FedEx sent me a notification that it was gonna be another day or two. And so what happened is it ended up sitting on the truck, sitting in, it's sitting in probably what was like an unbearable temperature. So by the time the yeast got to me, the ice packs that were in there, no good. The yeast pack was completely swollen. It was, I felt like it was gonna pop when I touched it. So I immediately put them in the refrigerator and they did go down a little bit, but they still remained quite puffy. I was like, I need to make a starter with this just to make sure that there's still some viable yeast. I opened them up, it smelled like rotten eggs. It was terrible. <laughs> you know, bad. I decided to make a starter and the starter smells like beer. They weren't dead because it fermented and it smells like beer and I don't get any sulfur smell or anything like that. So careful, otherwise I get them mixed up. So I have the one that I brewed with Kavike in the right, and the one that was brewed with the thiol releasing yeast on the left. Definitely get the Kavike orange citrus smell, thiol releasing. I get sulfur, which is not supposed to be present in a hazy IPA. Kavike is in the right. Color-wise, they look really similar. Uh, very hazy. The Kavike one, this one over here, to me, it looks a little bit almost darker and, and more opaque than the Omega Yeast Star Party. The Star Party almost looks like it might even be starting to clear up, but how do they taste? I really don't think it's gonna be possible for me to miss, miss uh, for me to cross these up because I can tell them apart. The Star Party one has a distinct sulfur, that little hint of like rotten egg smell in it, which I thought for a moment was going away a little bit, but today I clearly smell it in there. So I can clearly tell them apart. So right is the Kavike, a true to fashion Kavike hazy New England IPA. It's got that typical citrus orange flavor. I don't really feel like the Phantasm powder added anything to this one. This is a good beer. It's just, it's got that Kavike, that Voss Kavike flavoring to it. It just tastes like orange to me. Definitely drinkable. I feel like it's lacking a little bit in the mouthfeel with this one. It's a good beer. I definitely will be drinking that one. Star Party one, a little scary to me because it's got that sulfur smell. Let's see if I taste it. It's hard to distinguish if I taste it. It definitely doesn't taste the same as this one. I, I pretty much could guarantee, I think I could pick which one is which out of a lineup blind every single time. And it's just really hard to get past that sulfur smell. And unfortunately, this one with the Phantasm powder and the thiol releasing yeast, it is really lackluster. I mean, I was expecting it to be a totally different drinking experience and it is absolutely not. I probably screwed up somewhere. Newsflash, I make a lot of mistakes brewing. This is obviously you know, there were some things that I probably didn't do quite right. Could I have done a little bit better job in researching and doing all that? Absolutely. It doesn't taste horrible. It just doesn't taste great. I'm probably gonna end up dumping this one out. Let me just start right now. I am definitely disappointed in the Phantasm powder and the thiol releasing yeast. It might be a good experiment to try with the Cosmic Punch. Definitely want to try it in the winter months so that I don't have to worry about swollen packages of almost bursting yeast that's just fermenting in the package because I really think that had a large part to do with that beer turning out that bad because it, it really, it's, it's not that good. I'm not, that's not the beer that I'm gonna have people come by, oh hey, 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 try this beer. Try this beer, it's so good. No, because it's not, it tastes like baby farts. <sniffs> you know, bad. I just don't want to drink that. I mean, I'm gonna drink this one. Cheers, thanks for watching. See you on the next episode.